Hello friends, I'm not Jim Nance, nor do I play Jim Nance on TV. Just, no. I'm Kurt Bergland, and I'm with you today to introduce you to a game called Clubhouse Baseball. I'm going to be spending my YouTube shows today and tomorrow with a walkthrough of Clubhouse Baseball and a demo of Clubhouse Baseball. So if you decide to purchase it, either at a thrift store or online, uh, you know what you're getting yourself into. It's a game that I enjoy. Uh, I like it more and more every time I play it. And there are only three seasons available, so it's not a game that is still in production. It was, however, licensed by the Major League Players Association, which means one thing, that the... Major League Baseball did not market it very well. Now, I know that's going to come to a <clears throat> as a surprise to you that Major League Baseball didn't market something very well. Isn't that odd? I've never heard of that before. Okay, so this video today will be a walkthrough of what you get and a little bit about how the game plays. It's pretty easy though. Um, the seasons that I have are 89 and 90, 1989 and 1990. Um, kind of a mix of teams. Um, so let's go through what you get. First of all, the first thing to tell you is that um, you get 24 players per team on these cards, plus a ballpark card that you need to play the game. So there's 25 cards, to put it that way, uh, per team. Now, the cards, now I know that's going to make heads explode all over this great land of ours, because you do not get, with Clubhouse Baseball, every single player who's carded, or who played in the game. You don't. So my advice to you would be to get some lunch bags and breathe into those because it's going to help you immensely with the hyperventilation. Even if your head doesn't explode, I expect you could be in the fetal position on the ground and need those lunch bags. So keep them handy for God's sake. All right, here's a clubhouse baseball player card. Here's an APA player card, so you get an idea of the size that you're dealing with. Um, the game has a significant ability to be used as a two-player game or a solitaire game, either way. If you go two-player, you get to use cards like this to indicate your particular strategy, first of all, as a defensive team, and then as an offensive team, you reveal these as they come, as you would, as you would before a play unfolds. So this is for the two-player version. You get, with the game, a, a full instruction book. It's 32 pages. The font is semi-small, but this isn't a regular-sized book either. This is my pen, so you have an idea of dimensions. There's a fair amount of white space for some notes, if you choose to write some notes in your, in your book. Next, in your box, you will receive a... Uh, a manual that tells you about the teams from that season. Uh, and I'm having trouble putting on my hands on my manuals at this point. Uh, but I'll show those to you shortly. Uh, you get a master strategy playbook this is where you have bunting for hits base stealing bunting on a squeeze play a sacrifice bunt hit and run 
and stretching a hit into extra bases and wild play chart. So all of this sort of folds out as you need it for use during the game. The board that you get, uh, there are two of them. One is this one that you put the cards on and there are some helpful reminders here. You put your cards here, get your reminders up here and you're pretty much ready to play. The key to the whole game are these boards, which you can use as your play mat if you wanted to, or you can just keep them handy for as they come up. The board changes like APA with the base runner situation. So this one is four bases empty and it goes through and you get a booklet this thick with these, these are on cardboard and very, very durable, heavy stock. Next thing you get is a score sheet. And the score sheet fits two teams, both teams on one side of a page. There's room for defensive ratings for both teams at the bottom of the page. That's helpful. Not essential, but helpful for this game. Plenty of room for... Uh, pitching changes, six lines for pitchers, uh, and six lines for substitutions below your batting order. Uh, and really, you, you could go, if you use the stat columns, you could go for 10, 12, 14, 16, 18 innings maybe on this score sheet um, if you needed to. So... Pretty good score sheet. Gotta say I like it. It's one of my two or maybe three favorites in all of baseball cards and dice sims. All right. Uh, this is what a ballpark card looks like in clubhouse baseball. And I'm going to show you how to use those. Uh, I have played about seven or eight games of clubhouse baseball so far. And I've got to say that my average number of rolls to resolve and at bat is probably less than one and a half. Meaning, the vast majority of the at bats will be resolved with your first roll. There are some that will take a second roll and a very few that will need a third roll. So the game plays pretty quickly. Uh, and there's really only two things that you need to remember to be able to start playing the game right out of the box. Um, and I'm gonna go through those with you now and play, I'm, in the, I'm halfway through a game, I stopped so that I could show you um, kind of a game midstream. And then uh, I want to take you through an inning or two of the game so that you get a sense of how the game plays. Then tomorrow will be a full game demo of Clubhouse Baseball. Um, but there's really, I mean, yes, there's a strategy, there's a, these strategy charts that you need to learn, the master strategy playbook that you need to learn how to use, but it's pretty quick. And once you get, like any game, once you get the hang of it, the playtime reduces uh, very, very quickly. So that I would say I'm doing games now between 30 and 40 minutes, depending upon the amount of runs that are being scored. So it's it's not on the low, it's not APA basic where you or strat basic where you crank out a game in 18 minutes. It's not that, but it's also... Not like some of the other games where you're going to be sitting there for an hour or maybe a little more uh, finishing up your game once you're in the groove. Uh, okay, so what we're going to do now is to go to the... Uh, take a look at the charts, the game boards, and roll an inning or two so you can see what it looks like. And then I invite you to come back tomorrow to take a look at the full game demo that we will do. The teams that we're using in this 
game is would be are the teams are I can speak good I can talk good English. Uh, the teams are the 1990 Boston Red Sox at the 1990 Milwaukee Brewers. We are at County Stadium, my favorite ballpark throughout this great land of ours that doesn't exist anymore. Okay, at least not in its old form. It still sort of exists, but that's a story for another day. All right, so let's go to take a look at what the boards look like. All right, the first thing I want to show you is the booklet that will get you up to speed on uh, the seasons that are available for clubhouse baseball in case you don't know a great deal about them. So the 1990 edition of the book covers the 1989 season. They give you in this book player rosters, starting lineups, lefty righty data, games played at every position, team rankings, team averages, and rankings for clubhouse player ratings in base running, bunting, fielding, and pitcher effectiveness. So, let's, this is baseball reference before baseball reference. So, this is the Baltimore Orioles page. Let's get a little light on the subject here. So, this is the Baltimore Orioles page. For 1989 and you see all the players are listed here that you get percentage that they play against lefty and righty pitching so you get an idea of whether they were platoon players or not you get the positions that they played for pitching you get some data you get a suggested starting lineup and then you get their team data how they did relative to their division to the league and then throughout the major leagues and you get this for all of the teams in baseball at that time then the 1991 edition does the very same thing so i'm assuming that you get one of these for the uh, 1989 edition that covers the season of 1988 as well, although I don't own that particular set. Here are the player boards that, or the play boards that I mentioned. Um, this is the tool that you need to be able to play the game. Um, and so what you get are four dice, three D6s that are identical, and then your one white die that has a white side and then is numbered one to five for the rest of it. But there is a blank side intentionally left there. What happens when you play clubhouse baseball is that the pitcher and the hitters match up thusly and you're gonna roll the four dice. Now, as I said a moment ago, the vast majority of your outcomes are going to be resolved with that first roll. The vast majority of them will be. But some will require a second and a few a third roll. So, what do you get here? This is the uh, stamina indicator for Basio as a... Uh, giving up three runs or more he reaches his stamina he reaches he becomes tired or appears in seven innings not pitches seven innings but appears in seven innings he has an injury rating he has a pickoff number that's important if you're trying to steal um stats are in the box on the hitter's card for Ellis Burks, you get a stolen base slash run rating. You get a uh, sacrifice bunt rating, an injury rating, and room for a power rating. Here's his defense. There's Basio's defense. And then everything else rolls off these cards. Now, if there is not a letter modifier that applies when you make the roll, there are a lot of letter modifiers in this game that could pop up next to a rolled number. But 
If you don't get one of those that applies to what you're doing, you take the lower number between the two. So for example, let's just roll this here. I just rolled uh, two fives and a six. So what happens is you set your high dice to the side along with your white die and you look first at the two low red numbers and you read them together, that's 55. 55 is a 21E on Basio's card. It's a 23 on Burks's card. Now an E refers to there being no runners on base. If there's no, if the bases are empty, hence the E for empty, then you take it. If it doesn't apply, let's say this was something else with maybe a T at the end of it, then we would jump and take the other number no matter what it was. All right, but in this particular case, the E does apply. Let's say Burks is leading off this inning against Basio, and it's 21 E. Well, now we have something. So now we come down here to the ballpark, and the ballpark has all sorts of numbers all over that tell you what's going on. So. We have a 21E. Now that, as it happens, is a long fly result with a six after it. This is a result that could be affected by pitcher fatigue. That's what the red plus means. So you'll see red pluses around the diamond and then some not. So this is an outcome that if Basio was tired would change as a result of that, but it doesn't because he's not tired yet. We're in the bottom of the fifth in our game. So we have to check now. It's a 21, but we look for this number. Does this number match the large red number? If it does, then we need a second roll. If it doesn't, let's say this roll was a two, then there would just be a straight fly out to left field, no fuss, no muss, the bats resolved in one roll. But it's not. It's a six that we rolled. And so now we have to do a little more work. And the page that I keep open as I watch or as I play this game is this one. Because we need the rating of the fielder. Something's going to happen with the fielder on this. All right, so now we have a long fly. So we're going to look on our chart, and that's going to be considered a fly ball down here. And LF is a long fly. So potentially, we could be looking down here for a result. But to find out whether we are or not, we have to look at the white die. Now, the white die in this case is a 2. The 2 tells us that we read from the B2 column of the ballpark card. Now, the ballpark card is County Stadium right there. So we have a B2 result, we have a long fly, and we have the word no. Now no tells us it's not gonna be resolved on this card. No tells us we gotta come back here. And no, down to long fly, is gonna be a double. And that's how the outcome of this particular play is resolved. So Burks hits a long fly, presumably off the wall or bounces off the wall. Left fielder goes to get it. He's got himself a double off of the long fly result, which is a result of the dimensions and the offensive characteristics in 1990 of County Stadium. So we needed two rolls to resolve that at bat. Let's do another one with these same two. Uh, but let's move this so that we have a runner on second base and you can see what that looks like. I'm gonna change the chart 
so that we have a runner on second. You'll see that on this uh, particular board, we have the numbers all spread around like the other one. And just for fun, we'll say that Dwight Evans is coming to the plate with Burks at second base. So here are the player cards that we need. All right. So Basio makes his pitch. And we have our three red dice and our white one. Now we organize our dice in clubhouse baseball low to high. So we need our two red, low red ones. We need our high red one over here, and we need our white one. So we have an outcome of 45. That's a 10 on Basio's card. It's a 14K on Evan's card. Now, normally, normally, again, we take the low number, but we're wondering what this letter means. Well, a K means that if he's hitting with two outs, this becomes the number that you play. But there's nobody out. Burks hit a leadoff double. So we come back here to Basio and we take a 10. All right. Now, we find the 10 on this chart, and it's a ground out to third, but our high number, our high red number, is a six. Well, that matches this, so we know we've got a little more work to do. But notice that you're only doing this, there's only one number that could be next to each outcome. There are six numbers on a red die, so you have a one in six chance of needing to do a second roll. That's why I say the vast majority of these are, are resolved in one roll. All right, the white die is a four. This is my page that I leave open all the time. For a white die rating of three, four, reading of three, four, five, the fielding ability of the defensive player is needed to determine the outcome of the play. Rethrow the three red dice and arrange them low to high. Compare the third high die to the fielder's fielding rating. All right. Well, The third baseman that I selected to play in this game for the Brewers is not my all-time favorite Brewer, but he's a third. Now, we're going to re-throw our red dice. And we arrange them low to high. Now, his fielding rating is a 63. If... The high number matches the first digit. We're going to look down here at ground balls under first and match the number of outs. There's nobody out. But it doesn't because it's a six. If it matches the second digit, we're going to look at the second ground ball chart and look for the number of outs. If it matches the uh, E digit, which is right here, he's an E4, uh, then we're going to look for the E rating and look in that part of the chart. But it doesn't match any of those, so we go to the ballpark card. We go to the ballpark card. Now, we're going to take the 4, and it becomes a 4 on the ballpark card because that's our match. And then we're going to look in the ground out. Ground out becomes an E for Sheffield. And so we're going to read the E column with nobody out on the side chart here. And it's going to be a one base error on Sheffield. No advancement because it's hit in front of Burke. So the advance is zero. Burks holds, Evans is safe at first, and that's the error. So the Red Sox now have runners on first and second, and nobody out. A blossoming rally. So 
we change our charts to be the first and second chart. I'm going to, there we go. You just need a little brute force sometimes with your baseball sims. And we're going to bring up one more batter. And that'll be, that'll conclude what I'm trying to show you here. If we get the result I'm looking for. It's going to be Tony Pena coming up to face Basio. Now there's nobody out, and there's runners on first and second. So we have our first and second chart, and we've got our results here. We got our four dice. We rolled. We're going to organize high to low to high. So we have a 12. We might need these. We might not. We'll see. It's a 12 on Basio's card. That's a 10. We have a nine on Pena's card. It's a nine E. So if the bases are empty, we take this rating, but it's not. So even though this number is lower, we're gonna take the 10 off Basio's card. So there is batter pitcher interaction. Put the gun down. There is batter inter pitcher interaction. All right, so 10 becomes a ground ball to second base. So we have a chance for a fielder's choice, a four six fielder's choice. But I rolled a six again. So we gotta come back to that chart. I'm hot with the sixes today. And we have a two on the white die. So we're gonna read the B2 column of the ballpark card. Well, we're coming back to County Stadium and it's a force out which we read as a ground out and it's a no result so we come over here there's one out there's nobody out sorry nobody out and so we look at the zero row and the no column it's a ground out at first base the runners advance one base so burks and evans move up to third and second base and there's one out now and runners at second and third we're gonna do one more batter. It's pretty simple and it flows beautifully once you get the hang of when what you need to do for the second roll. So Pena is out. And one of my all-time favorite players from the 80s is up. That's Tom Brunanski. Now, Brunanski's up. Oops, I have the wrong chart up. Second and third, it should say. Uh, <laughs> uh, here is second and third. All right. Second and third, one out. And this one might be our last little demo for today. So it's Bernanski versus Basio. Here we go. Okay, we're gonna go low to high. We again have a 12. That's a 10 on Basio's card. It's a four on Bernanski's card. And if I move my, um, hand here, you can see it's a four on Bernanski. It's a 10 on Basio. No letters follow the numbers. No letters follow the numbers. So that means we take the low number. The low number is a four, and that's a strikeout. That is a strikeout for Brunanski. And two outs now. No letter modifiers follow either number on the 12. Take another look. Four with no letter, 10 with no letter. Brunanski then strikes out. And that ends his at bat. So there's two outs now and the runners are still at second and third. This give you a closer look at this. This is the play board. It gives you some notes to refer to. This gives you an idea of where your numbers are gonna land, where are your hits going on the field. That helps you look. These are your strategy cards that you use if it's a two-player game. These are your symbols for following, that follow any of the numbers potentially. 
on a player card. This reminds you about pitcher stamina. And then these are other things you need for the game, infield choice and runner stretch. Your ballpark card, if you were using this, would go right here and your player cards would go there. And you're ready to play clubhouse baseball. Now we haven't gone through the master strategy playbook. We haven't played a full game or anything like that. But this is a brief introduction to the game called Clubhouse Baseball. Tomorrow on my channel will be a full game demo of the game for you to take a look at in case you are thinking you might want to get involved and pick yourself up a copy of Clubhouse Baseball. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm Kurt Berglund. Uh, thank you so much for sharing some time with me today. So long, everybody.